Okay, here we go. We've had the Herodians. We've had the Sadducees. Tag team again. Here we go. Now the Pharisees. And you're going to learn from this lesson if you're going to any kind of public ministry. You're going to be asked these questions that have no value. They don't want no answer. And what they want you to do is they want you to look like an idiot in front of everybody. See, if they can make you look like an idiot, like you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what you're saying, then, you know, hey, we don't need to hear you. And you would ask the kind of question, well, have you ever been in a public ministry where you didn't know the answer? Yes. And how's it feel? Hmm? You go home and you study the answer. Listen, I could not handle the Jehovah Witnesses like I've been allowed by God to handle them today. If I didn't go home, okay, let me see what they say. Let me see what they believe. And I've been through many Jehovah Witnesses where they went home, ha, 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 taught him. Yeah. And you're going to go to home into hell, and I'm going to go to home in heaven. You're going to, if you go to heaven, you're going to be highly displeased not to hear, well done. I am. So, if you get these questions, you get these arguments, the best thing I can tell you is go home, study them out, and just be prepared. And the thing is, preach the gospel. There have been many times in street preaching, they'll come up to me, uh, and uh, Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and rose again the third day according to Scripture. Well, what do you say? I say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and I shall be saved. And, and just, hey, you ain't going to get your questions answered till you first believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And half the people don't even know where Genesis is in the Bible without using an index. So, but when the Pharisees, he's a religious sect in Israel, they're the uppy up up. This is the this is the sect that Paul is from. And a lot of people say, well, how could Paul be an apostle when the three offices of the apostle was number one, they were baptized by John the Baptist. Well, John was baptized by John the Baptist. He had to follow the ministry of Jesus. And here are the Pharisees, they're walking around with Jesus. Paul was probably in that crowd. <clears throat> they had to see the resurrected Christ. Duh, on the road to, uh, I'm going to say the road to Indianapolis. That wasn't Paul. On the road to uh, Damascus, he saw the resurrected Jesus. So the Pharisees had heard how he, Jesus, had put the Sadducees to silence. You know, the Sadducees came up, well, tell us something. Tell us what we don't believe. And then Jesus just blasted them out of the water. The Herodians come, you know, you know, we just love the Roman government and all that. What do you think about paying taxes to him? And he just blew them out of the water. Next. And they gathered together. Did you hear what happened? Yeah, you know, he put that, look at, they got their tail between their legs. Come on. What can we ask them? Oh, come on, what can we ask them? No, 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 that's too simple. No, 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 I don't know. Even we don't know the answer to that. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, okay, ready? Tempting him. All right. You're on the wrong track. Not tempting, not asking a question, saying, hey, I really, I don't understand the scriptures. I mean, there are some places in my Bible that I have a little question mark, and if Jesus would show up and he wouldn't, and he would say, ask a question. Or I would come upon to asking Jesus a question. All right, there, there are many places in my Bible I would ask a question. Looking for an answer. I don't understand this God. I don't understand this Jesus. I don't understand this Holy Spirit. That's why I got a question next to him. They're asking questions. They're trying to nail him. They're trying to catch him. They're trying to find something that they can bring to the Jewish Senate, Sanhedrin, or bring to the government that says, ha we got him. And when we do finally get to the trial of Jesus, 
they didn't even bring to Pilate the charges that they had in the Sanhedrin. Now, we ask you, you know, I, I don't have it correctly saying, but, you know, just, are you the Son of God? Are you God? And Jesus answered, and they, oh, bless me, bless me, all right, we got him. And they go before Pilate, oh, what's the charge? Oh, you say, he'll, he'll tear the temple down in three days and build it again. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Why could they not bring the charges of Jesus is God? Well, because they're talking to a man who believes like the Baptist Church as star of the God. You know her as Easter. And you just love that as stars in the book of Acts. And it wasn't celebration of a, of a resurrection. It was celebration of killing James, the apostle of God. Uh-oh. And Peter the rabbit was in jail. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempted him, saying, are, are we in a bad track? Master. There's that master again. Now, if you look in chapter 22, verse 16, here's the Herodians, master. You look in chapter 22, verse 24, master. You look at the, 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 uh, the, the Pharisees, master. That means rabbi. That's not and I talked about this last time. This is not Messiah. Messiah is M-E-S. They is M-A-S. You see, they have brought Jesus, the Messiah, God, down to their level. He's a teacher like us. Now, even if he was just a teacher, he sure ain't like you guys are. So you would ask your common Jehovah Witness, who is Jesus? Well, he's a good educator. He's a good teacher. Well, you got that from the, from the Pharisees. Which is the great commandment in the law? And the law is filled with commandments. And the law takes you to the first five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. All right, but the commandments go all the way back to Adam. Well, well no, we got the Ten Commandments. No, there's more than Ten Commandments. Adam was given the commandment. Thou shalt not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. That was a commandment to God, to, to, to man by God. And he blew it. So, what is the greatest commandment? And what Jesus answers in Deuteronomy 6, 5 is the commandment of the Jews today. I forget what they call it. But if you go back to Deuteronomy 6, 5, Deuteronomy 6, 5, Deuteronomy is the second given in the law. These are when the Jews are going to go into the promised land. And it's called the great commandment here of Israel, the Lord, Jehovah, our God, is one Lord in, in Deuteronomy. Now there's the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Now the Jews don't believe that. They believe there's one God, and Jesus can't be God because he's two gods. And the Holy Spirit can't be God, there would be three gods. And yet three are in one, and one are in three. It blows them all out of order. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. And that's how to do the enemy. Jesus shows up in Matthew. Thou shalt love thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Well, he didn't quote here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Why? They don't believe it. And the very fact is, if you were to love the Lord thy God, you would believe the Lord thy God. With all thy heart, you would seek that you are talking to the Messiah. 
And with all thy soul, you would believe on the Messiah. With all thy mind, you would think about what the scriptures say about who you are talking to. But since you're asking him a question, tempting him, there's no heart, so or mind. Now, the heart is the emotion of man. And yet Jeremiah says it's desperately wicked. And the world will say today, oh, just follow your heart. And I will tell you out of the Bible, don't follow your heart. Thy soul, that's your eternal. That's the eternal part of you that will live forever in heaven or live forever in hell. And all thy mind. And Jesus will go forward to say in John that he is the way, the truth, and the life. All your feelings, all your eternalness, and all your thoughts is to go to God. And there are, there are Christians today, you want to bring it up to the Christian, you want to bring it up to the church, eh? their thoughts, their hearts, and their soul is not to God. It's recreation, it's career, it's, it's the bargain, whatever it is. Man failed. And the, the, he says the great commandment, the very first commandment is out of the ten, God is first. Always, every time. We failed that one. I'm sorry, you get up at 3 o'clock in the morning because your bladder is full and you're tired and you're on the way to the, to the bathroom and you, and you kick a chair, whatever. Your mind is not on God first thing, it should be. Resting to the fact is that you roll that on the bed and say, oh, I can hold it, I can hold it, I can hold it. He says, this is the first and great commandment. And this commandment among the Jews is supposed to be the order of all Jews. While denying the Messiah, the Jehovah, the Jesus saves. And passing up who Jesus really is. Even the Christian would have a problem with this commandment. 365 days in a year. 24 hours a day. The very fact is, I love the Lord your God, thy God with all thy heart. The very fact is that when you do sin, we do sin. All right, you weren't thinking about God. When you size somebody up or, or you don't give the proper answer to somebody you are witnessing to or, or have come in your path, that's the soul. <coughs> if you really cared about that soul, you would give that person all he needs to know. In all your mind. You're at work and you're given a very difficult situation. You are you you're having a daily life and you're given a very difficult situation. Many times, God is not on that thought. This is the first and great commandment. Well, the first commandment of the ten is God is first. In order to be God to be first, Jesus tells us. It's to be all on your heart and all on thy soul and all on thy mind. And so I, I had one guy my whole entire life tell me, well, you know, I've never sinned. Oh, come on. If you were to have somebody saved or lost, say, well, there's no sin for me to commit today. Oh, brother, yes, there is. And that first commandment would be the least of your sins to, to confess because you don't even think about it. The second is like unto it. 
Now, the second commandment, when you run over to Exodus 20, is not what Jesus is going to say right now. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. That, 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 that ranks up in there the tenth. Covet your neighbor's goods. So the very fact that Jesus says God is first, the next unto him is your neighbor, your fellow Jews, and also including the Gentiles because you're, they're your neighbors. You would have a problem with Jonah and Peter with that one to a point. Because throughout the Bible and throughout the, 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 the future the Bible is going to be written in that has not been written yet in the book of Acts. Well, you know, the riddles are neglected. The second is like your neighbor. Well, what about the riddles? They're, they shouldn't be neglected. How about all Israel? When, when Jews get saved, they're ostracized in the book of Acts. And it got to a point that they had to, from the mission church, send money back to the home church because there was no jobs. There was no homes. There was no, you ain't in this community no more, you Jesus lover. The very fact is today, too, for Jews, if a family member believes on Jesus as their Savior, there, is a, there has been such a point, a mock funeral, as throwing that child out of their house. You can't even love your own child. How about your neighbor? There are Christians, oh, they talk about missionary, missionary, and, you know, missionaries going to Africa, missionaries going to Europe, missionaries going to Russia, Michigan, going to Ukraine, and they won't even go next door to their neighbor and tell them about Jesus. They won't even put bumper stickers on their car. They won't put a sign on their house. But they'll, oh, I tell them about my church. Your church. I put a post on my Facebook yesterday. I forget when I put it. It says, here's the question. Are you more faithful to your church? Or are you more faithful to Christ? Because there is a difference, though they both start to see. You can go to church every Sunday, every midweek, every fellowship, everything involves in that. You can be faithful to that church and unfaithful to Jesus. You can be a member of a church and still go to hell. On these two commandments hang all the law, Moses, and the prophets, the writings, the Torah, and the writings. And when you go read the Old Testament and you are reading in the five books of Moses and you're reading the story of the prophet, think about the very thing. God is to be first. God is to be all your heart. What's wrong with, what's wrong with Cain? It wasn't all his heart. What's wrong with soul? And he sure wasn't thinking about Jesus or God. What happened in the time of Noah with all the world? There was no heart, there was no soul, there was no mind. Well, what about Noah? Man, he gave his heart to God. And God prepared a, a boat for him and his family and a home. His soul was saved. He's, he's going to be in heaven. And his mind was thinking about, not only did he build that ark, but he preached to the people that the coming reign, the coming judgment of God. And he was thinking about his neighbors. How far did, did, did Noah think about his neighbors? Who shut the door? God did. Not Noah. Noah left the door open. You think about that. How far would it have been to Noah before he shut that door? I mean, you know there are probably people outside that ark swimming in. It was a point that God says, we're done. Noah... <laughs> So when you read through the Law and Prophets, there's three things to look for. 
the Lord thy God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. The trouble that show up, David did not have a heart for God. He had a heart for Bathsheba. Solomon put his soul in other gods in a thousand lives. And the mind of Israel now was not on God as it should have been. Because if their mind was set upon God, they'd be, hey, here's the Messiah. As far as the neighbors of the, of the people now, coming up yet in the future in Matthew is, crucify him, crucify him. In the book of John, is there was a blind man, and he, he's, in, he's in the synagogue, he's in the temple, and they throw him out because of Jesus. <laughs> And while the Pharisees were gathered together. So there's no response. It's actually to a fact is that they agree with Jesus. He didn't say anything to their error. Though so they did not acknowledge God with their heart with their soul and their mind, and sure don't think about their neighbors as they should. Jesus was right, and they're not doing it. So while the Pharisees were gathered together, he left them in awe. Well, he put the Herodians, and he put the Sadducees, well, what could we say? Now, here comes the next problem. Jesus asked them. You see, Jesus doesn't have anybody in his corner will go up and you know, smack their hands and say, okay, give me a break and then you go in there. No, he doesn't. Because he's got the Father, he's got himself, and he's got the Holy Spirit all together. And you're going to find in the Scriptures... When Jesus asked these groups of people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the chief priests, when he has a question, they don't answer him. Mark that. Every time they come up to you, they got a smart, a smart question for Jesus. They're trying to catch. Jesus answers them and puts them to shame. He turned, and when he turned around and said, listen, i got a question. Let me ask you something. They don't answer. The baptism of John, was it of heaven or was it, was it of men? Well, we say of heaven, he'll say, why didn't you believe on heaven? And we say of men, oh, oh man, everybody just loves John the Baptist. We, we can't tell you. That's not an answer. I mean, that's like... You know, the broken lamp in your house, mom comes home. Who broke the, the lamp? Well, I don't know. That's not an answer. Saying, what think ye of Christ? Oh, <laughs> that's a loaded question. They just called him in three places I showed you. Master, master. Master, Jesus, okay, what do you think of Christ? What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. Right, yes. Matthew chapter 1. The whole gospel of Matthew is about the son of David, Jesus Christ. Go back and look at Matthew chapter 1 on your own time. There was the, 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 the blind men. Jesus, son of David. Save us. Jesus, son of David. And then he's coming into the city. And they're putting the palm branches out there. And they're putting the branches in their clothes. He's riding on the mule in the air. They're saying, son of David. Jewish. Jewish. He is not. He is not the son of David to us. That's a Jewish. <coughs> today, today, it's not the son of David, it's the star of David. 
that Star of David is the Star of Rip Ram, which the, the Old Testament, I forget which book it is, says it's a God. It's your God, Rip Ram. Now, I'll use in some of my 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 posties all that because that's what people recognize. But you know, Doctor Ruckman would draw angels on the on uh, wings on the angels because that's what people recognize. But there's no wings. So who? What do you think of Christ? Whose son is? They say the son of David. Uh, just a couple of days ago, remember in the temple? Remember they're saying son of David, and they got all upset. <laughs> The people has proclaimed to you Pharisees who I am. I am much more than a master. He's the living God. And he said unto him, okay, how then does David in spirit, inspiration, call him Lord, saying? Now we are in Psalms 110. Verse 1. Psalms 110 verse 1 is inspiration because Jesus, who is God, who is also the Holy Spirit, says, by the Spirit of God, David said, he's Lord. So when David's writing, the Holy Spirit says, okay, write Lord. Okay. And that's how, the old, that's how the Old and New Testament is brought to us. When the Holy Spirit led all the writers of the Bible to say what well, I want you to say. All the prophecies were written not by man, as man would say man wrote the Bible. It would be written by what Jesus has said, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, which lacks in any and all religious books. The Koran would have more colors than any inspiration by any God. As the Book of Morons in the Witch Tower or watch whatever it is, there's no inspiration. Jesus has said all many other places, but right here in this story, Psalms one ten, David wrote by the Holy Spirit inspiration, and David is talking about. Now, when you go back and you read Psalms 110, David is speaking about the Christ. And the Christ is revealed to David by the Holy Spirit. And he says, Lord. The Christ is the Lord. And when we go back and we look at Deuteronomy, we're not going to do it, 6-5, when Jesus read, leaves out, O Israel, here, the Lord thy God, I forget what it is, thy God is the Lord. Jesus, what he left out the law said, he brings it back in David. So the beginning part of, of the greatest commandment shows up in Psalms 110 as Jesus introduces to them he is the Messiah he is to be the greatest commandment in your life and we'll see the reaction so he says how then does David in spirit call him Lord saying all right this is Psalm 110 the Lord said unto my Lord, all capitals, Jehovah, God, said unto my Lord, small l, Jehovah speaking to the Lord Jesus. Now, what are you going to do with that one, the Jehovah Witness? Well, see, there's two of them. And Thomas said, my Lord, my God. We're back to that Lord again. See, that's why you got to get out of the Greek and Hebrew. Sit thou on my right hand. Who is seated at the right hand of God today? Jesus. 
So the one that's seated at the right hand of God is capital L-O-R-D. God, Jehovah, is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. But the scriptures proclaim all the way back to Genesis 1-1, one, one, the three are one, the one, two, and three are one. And the Jews are blown out of the water. You tell a Jewish rabbi, a, 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 a Jewish pure person, there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and you will anger him. No, 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 the Lord our God is one God. Yeah. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, 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 that's three. And that's the very same thing that Jehovah Witnesses will get in an argument with. You have got to understand the Trinity. Though the Trinity, this sounds all too familiar, is un un understandable. And I was talking to my pastor about this last night. This is the, the, the doctrine of the Trinity, which is one of the grades I, I almost failed in school. The, the worst grade I ever got was the Trinity. When you're trying to, to, whatever you want to call it, you go into the realm of the Trinity, that's when the devil's going to step in and say, oh, come on, you really think three and one and one and three and all that? You really, come on, you really do that? Okay, there's a red light, there's a yellow light, and green light. They're a traffic light, but they're not the same. <laughs> uh, you know, God was in heaven speaking. Jesus was in the water wet, and the, and the Holy Spirit came down. As a they weren't one. you got to be careful when it comes to the Trinity, because you must believe in the Trinity, though the Trinity is unbelievable. And the problem is for the Jehovah Witness and the, and the Jews, all right, if they're three and one and one and three, then what was Jesus doing on the earth while God was in heaven? That's a good question. But you Pharisees have always asked these kind of questions before God. I'll just believe it as a fact, okay? Just plain and simple. They're, they're three and one and one and three. It's just that simple. Explain it. I'll explain it to the best I can with the scriptures, and other than that, if you're going to ask me questions to try to catch me up, to try to deframe me, defraud me, you're doing exactly what the Pharisees are doing. I don't want to waste my time. And when you get into... De See, that's one of the things with the public ministry. Are you dealing with somebody who has a debatable question? Do you have somebody who has a question trying to trick you up? Or do you have somebody who's really asking a serious question? Now, not all the, where did Cain get his wife from? All those questions are not to see, because there may be somebody just, you know, where did he get his wife from? So, sit down at my right hand, that's Jesus. Till I make thy enemies thy footstool. Well, that's the second advent. When Jesus literally takes his foot and steps on him. Okay, I'll take it for granted right there. Uh, Psalms 110 and Matthew 22, 44. It looks like there's a father, there's a son, and always, yes, there is. But they are one. And yet, in reality, the Father is a little bit higher than Jesus. <laughs> but they're not. We all may understand this in heaven. If David then called him Lord, small, I mean, capital L, small O, small R, small D, Jesus, how is he his son? 
because Jesus is God and he's the son. And I'm going to let you go run back to Matthew chapter 1. If you really want to answer, you will run over to Matthew 1 in your time and you will see the generation of Jesus, Jesus, the son of David, and then runs down the line. When you see Mary's in Luke chapter 3, though it's Nathan, not Solomon, still, he is the son of David. But he is the son of God. So, Jesus, who is God, is also 100% man. And that's hardly not believed. No man was able to answer him a word. So don't deal with the heretics. Don't deal with the religionists. Don't deal with the atheists. Because you know what? If you if you tell someone, listen, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are one, they are three, they are one, they are three. If they're there to trick you up, if they're there because they just don't believe the Bible, just leave them. Because even you as a Christian can't understand. How are you going to show a bunch of unbelievers? Well, you know, they put me... Let them think whatever they want to think. I guarantee when they stand before Jesus at the great white throne judgment, Jesus will put them down. It's better for Jesus to put them down than you sit there and lie and start throwing all your... what you think. But when we go back to... Looking at the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all right, watch this, 44, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, Jehovah God, S capital L, small O, small R, small D, Jesus Christ, verse 43, the Spirit call him Lord, there's the Holy Spirit, there's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, there they are right there, look how he did that, now, we're not done, look at 37, all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. There's the Trinity there. God's the heart. All right, think about your... It's your emotions. You don't see your emotions. You don't see God. You're the soul. Jesus Christ is eternal. If you believe on it, you will get eternal life. There's Jesus Christ, your mind. You don't see your mind. You don't see your thoughts. There's the Holy Spirit. There's the Trinity again. Look what Jesus this did. He brought to us the three in one, the one. In, all right, so, okay, verse 37. There's the heart, the soul, and the mind. He put it all together in one thing. That's God. In God's the heart and soul and the mind. Yet the heart is God, the soul is Jesus, and the mind is Holy Spirit. He put it into one. There's the Trinity. No unsaved, no religionist is going to understand what you just saw. So, he comes down to 43. There's a spirit speaking of David. David says Jehovah. David says Jesus. The whole thing is one. Who is the Lord? Capital O O R D. Verse 45, he's the son, the son of who? The son of God. And the spirit is speaking to David about Jehovah and the Lord Jesus Christ. What? And no man was able to answer because they don't understand what just happened. Now a Christian would get that to a point. Now ask a Christian to completely explain it and he's not going to be able to. So neither does there is any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. <laughs> okay, we're done. We've had it. Don't deal with him. But in your ministry, you've got to decide, is this somebody truly looking for an answer? Or is this truly somebody looking for a conflict? <laughs> Or is this somebody trying to excuse their 
forbearance of God in the Bible. That's where you got to rightly divide. 